A little bit about the importance of scale. If offshore wind is to be a technical and commercial uh, success, then scale becomes critical. You, the average wind farm size on land is about, well, some 20 to perhaps, if you're lucky, maybe 100 megawatts. If you're in Texas, maybe 1,000, but there's very few Texas around. Um, but offshore, uh, you know, we can actually achieve economies of scale by going for much bigger units of production. That's why, for example, I no longer speak of wind farms when talking about the future of offshore wind uh, or of the supergrid. I only talk of wind-fired power stations, um, each of which has a standard size of 500 megawatts. Uh, they are the modules on which the supergrid will be built. So in thinking of the supergrid, think of clusters of 500 uh, megawatts of wind power. That would be 20 times bigger than the wind farm I, I built in Arklow Banks, uh, to this day Ireland's only offshore wind project. Then there are e economies of scale resulting from larger turbines. Turbine size has grown over the past two decades from the first one that we built in Ireland, which was 0.25 of a megawatt in Bella Cork in 1992, uh, to a current uh, size of 3 to 5 megawatts. In the medium term, they would be replaced by 6 to 7.5 megawatt machines. The expectation is that these in turn will be supplanted by a 10 megawatt unit, um, a giant of a turbine whose wingspan is 160 metres uh, and will be the equivalent of an office block of 33 storeys high. When mounted on its tower, the tip of the turbine blade could reach as high as a 40 storey building. These are the turbines of the future on which the supergrid will be based. So a little bit about the HVDC uh, network. Scale will be truly realized because of the technological breakthrough which has revolutionized our ability to link the generation and consumption of electricity irrespective of distance and without the power losses that are inherent in any AC transmission system. This sounds a bit engineering wise. Uh, so I'll, I'll persist and, and I'll make it simple if I think it's really uh, getting out of hand here. Um, the full significance of a switchable HVDC innovation has not yet been appreciated by policymakers or by the business community. It's clear that a network incorporating a HVDC grid with the redundancy and reliability of the ubiquitous AC grids is now a reality. The limits of what is technologically possible have been greatly expanded. It's a breakthrough in technology which will do for the energy sector uh, what the coming of passenger railways did in the 19th century uh, trade. It will eliminate the problem of transporting over long distance at speed and at affordable cost. Um, simply put, uh, a DC grid, the losses in a DC grid are proportional only to the cross-sectional area, where the losses in an AC grid, the stuff that does all the lighting here and all, everything else, uh, they're proportional to length. So basically above 75 kilometers it pays to uh, it pays to construct a grid out of DC. I've given you, um, you, know, you know, a little bit on, on the supergrid up to now, but I'd like to actually define it um, so as to get to a deeper understanding uh, of, of what's involved. When, for example, we combine the 500 megawatts power station with advances in turbine technology and include uh, transmission by HVDC, then we can define the supergrid as follows. It's an electricity transmission system, mainly based on direct current, designed to facilitate large-scale sustainable power generation in remote areas for transmissions to centres of consumption, one of whose fundamental attributes will be the enhancement of the market in electricity. I think that, def that definition says it all, uh, but I'm only too aware of the problems that are still to be solved, both technical 